Uh, okay, so I'm Alex Glickson, and I'm here with Ezra Silvera. We are, we are from IBM Research in Haifa. Uh, we are excited to be here at the summit, uh, and we would like to thank everyone who uh, are attending this session. Uh, we are going to talk about management of heterogeneous cloud in, uh, infrastructure. Uh, and more specifically on managing workloads that uh, comprise virtualized and uh, bare metal resources. Uh, the presentation will have uh, two parts. I'll present the first one and Ezra will be presenting the second one. In the first one, I'll give a brief overview of the heterogeneous clouds, why we need them, uh, a bit of motivation, opportunities, uh, challenges. And then we will go into more technical details on specifically managing workloads uh, with bare metal and virtualized uh, resources with OpenStack. Uh, and at the end, we will, have a, uh, we will be glad to answer your questions. Uh, so let's start with some background and motivation. Uh, so first few words about the evolution of the usage pattern, patterns of infrastructure as a service uh, clouds. Uh, so if we look at the early days, we can see that, so first of all, the, the value proposition of the cloud. Uh, so all of you probably know it's about uh, agility, efficiency, elasticity, and so on. Uh, so this, uh, those reasons are uh, basically driving the cloud adoption since the early days and until now. Uh, in terms of the main usage scenarios, uh, it started with uh, relatively simple dev and test scenarios and uh, uh, what can be called the cloud worn web applications. Uh, and looking at the requirements that those applications had, they, they were also relatively basic. Uh, so if we are looking at, for example, the Amazon EC2 service in 2006, it has just one standard instance type, and then it started to grow to five in 2008 and so on. But it started with a relatively basic a standardized uh, infrastructure offering. Uh, so looking at the current situation, uh, the value proposition is uh, remaining the same. Uh, but we can see that more and more, more applications and organizations want to leverage the, the benefits and basically to apply the same or to get the same agility, efficiency, etc., for a for much broader set of applications. Uh, this includes legacy applications, and business critical applications, things like high performance computing, analytics, uh, and so on. Uh, and also in terms of the organizations that are uh, deploying those solutions, we can see that there are more and more enterprises and more and more organizations which are based not just on born on in the cloud apps, but also much larger variety of applications overall. Uh, and this is also, this trend is also reflected in terms of the infrastructure offering that uh, are, uh, that exist now in the market. Uh, for example, from the previous example of Amazon, we can see that now they are offering, well, depends how exactly you count, but they are offering more than 60 instance configurations. Uh, and there is a, also a trend of uh, bare metal cloud providers which are offering bare metal servers uh, with uh, relatively, uh, also a relatively high spectrum of configurations that can be used for lots of different purposes. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, so just a few words regarding heterogeneity, what do we mean by heterogeneity? So a few examples include 
different uh, kinds of CPU, memory and disk, and includes different models and also different ratios between them. Uh, there is a heterogeneity in the compute space of different CPUs, different accelerators, GPUs, etc. that different applications might want to leverage. Uh, different storage uh, configurations, including SSDs, SAN, NAS, etc. Network, virtualization, and of also bare metal, which is an interesting case that we're go going to focus a bit more in the second part of the presentation. Uh, so just to give an illustration of the different configurations of how they can be used by, uh, by an application. Uh, so you can see here an example of an application that has uh, f four tiers. Each tier is optimized to run on a certain uh, virtual or physical hardware configuration. Uh, so the web tier, uh, there is a 3D rendering tier, and Hadoop cluster, and the database tier. Uh, so without going into details of what the application is, is doing, uh, there is an example here of how the different uh, tiers can be configured and deployed in the cloud. It could be on KVM-based uh, virtual machines. It could be bare metal machines with GPUs. For Hadoop, we might want to, to use SSDs and infin InfiniBand. We might want to use uh, SAN-based storage for databases and so on. So, and the idea here is that uh, we would like to have all those options together with the user experience that uh, a, a cloud user is, uh, is used to. Uh, so there are two things that we see uh, which are driving the heterogeneity of the infrastructure. One is the requirements of the application. So different applications might run better on different kinds of hardware. And another driver is uh, basically the, the time or the evolution over time of the, of the hardware itself. So in terms of applications, uh, there are many different kinds of uh, application requirements. Uh, that are now coming to the cloud that used to be uh, just deployed in data centers and now there is a desire to, to migrate them to the cloud. Uh, so roughly there are those are the new if we focus on the new requirement on the new requirements, they can be categorized as uh, related to special resource requirements, uh, especially for resource intensive applications. Uh, and there are aspects re related to isolation. It could be a performance isolation or security isolation. Uh, so there, there are, of course, uh, many different applications. Each of them would require different things to migrate to the cloud, especially in the enterprise world. But those are the categories that we've identified as uh, kind of the most uh, critical. Uh, so on the second, uh, from the second perspective, uh, from the of heterogeneity, uh, what we are seeing basically is that uh, along the time, uh, there are new models of hardware that become available, and the old kind of uh, kinds of hardware become obsolete. So just taking a snapshot from once again from Amazon. Uh, you can see here a table of instance types that are currently available. Uh, and those in light green are, have been introduced just in, a in this April. Uh, and those in pink or in dark red uh, has been deprecated, essentially. Uh, so you can see here that uh, over time there are many configurations uh, that, leverage, uh, that are leveraging new hardware and become available, and there are others that are, are phasing out. And in any given uh, production environment or large environment, you're likely to find different parts of your infrastructure with uh, different hardware uh, 
uh, that have been acquired at different time periods. So this is another uh, inherent uh, reason for, for having heterogeneous environment in, in the cloud. So, and we think that uh, the support for this heterogeneity is essential for any cloud solution based on those two trends. Okay, so let's talk a bit about uh, opportunities. <coughs> uh, so there are two, two perspectives on opportunities that, uh, that uh, can be seen. One from the application provider perspective. Uh, so the availability of the much broader conf uh, set of configurations uh, enable additional uh, workloads to be migrated to the cloud including those from uh, traditional market segments um, like manufacturing, finance, scientific applications, and so on, uh, which are now being able to leverage agility and efficiency of the cloud for, for their businesses. And there is a huge opportunity there. There is, a, you can, uh, just uh, looking at the high performance uh, computing market, or in the broad sense, including the technical computing, big data. Uh, so this market is currently larger than the infrastructure as a service market as a whole. So we can see that there is a huge potential of offering uh, those workloads in the cloud model. And from the cloud provider perspective, uh, there is an opportunity here to build different customized solutions that would fit different uh, application classes. Uh, and we, this is especially, especially important given the current uh, trend of uh, commoditization of the infrastructure and the recent price wars that you are probably aware of. Uh, so this basically gives uh, the providers means to, to, to deliver differentiated uh, solutions leveraging different uh, heterogeneous infrastructure and resources underneath. Uh, so in order to enable all that, we need uh, a cloud infrastructure that is natively designed uh, for underlying heterogeneity and seam seam seamless uh, ability to seamlessly host applications with special requirements while still preserving the, the benefits of the, of the cloud model. Uh, so just a few examples in terms of the requirements that uh, this model imposes. Uh, just to summarize, so we have uh, access to wider range of uh, hardware and software configurations. Uh, the user expects uh, at least s s the same level of uh, user experience uh, was re uh, related to managing flavors, images, networking, and higher level services. Uh, and we think that uh, in, uh, with heterogeneity, there is an opportunity here to move to a higher level of uh, application abstraction. So instead of uh, specifying the individual resources uh, explicitly, we think that uh, there is a, a need here to go to a higher level of abstraction. It could be based on heat templates, for example, uh, to specify uh, the actual requirements of the application uh, or some performance goals and so on, and, and that there will be some tra translation layer that would map, map it to specific resources underneath based on the current condition of the infrastructure and based on the other workloads running at the same time. So from the provider perspective, uh, the basic requirement is, of course, uh, unified management and unified APIs uh, uh, for the entire life cycle of, of the infrastructure, uh, secure multi-tenancy across the different uh, resource types, uh, and also elasticity and efficiency, which becomes much more challenging when we have uh, larger fragmentation of resources and larger uh, amount of different kinds of resources. Uh, for example, 
uh, there might be a need to dy dynamically repurpose uh, hardware, uh, repurpose servers to different configurations based on the demand for certain configuration. Uh, and Ezra will elaborate on this a bit, a bit more, but we think that this, uh, such capabilities are critical uh, to make those offering, offerings not only uh, uh, be suitable for the workloads, but uh, also uh, remain uh, competitive uh, and efficient. Uh, so how all, all of that is related to OpenStack or what can we see happening in OpenStack in this respect? Uh, so it seems that uh, OpenStack is uh, following a relatively s similar pattern, starting with uh, s simplified approach to uh, managing flavors, scheduling, performance, and so on, uh, and evolving to a much broader set of uh, services that are addressing different kinds of applications, uh, including Hadoop, databases, bare metal workloads, uh, much better schedu scheduling to accommodate the requirements of, uh, of, the, of the applications, uh, and so on. And there is, uh, we also can see uh, growing interest for, uh, from the community in those topics. I just listed here a few sessions that are happening this week. Uh, there was one this morning on uh, bare metal multi-tenancy. Uh, there are a few additional uh, uh, sessions around bare metal. There are sessions around having hybrid environments in terms of hypervisors and so on. So there is a session uh, about uh, this solution that uh, IBM and software, software are offering. Uh, so we, think that, uh, we see that there is a lots of dynamics uh, that would eventually uh, take OpenStack to, to a position when it will be a good basis or uh, that it will be sufficient to, to host those additional applications and workloads. Uh, but of course, there are some technical gaps that still need to be addressed. Uh, and Ezra will elaborate on some of those gaps and also some of the or specifics of hosting hybrid workloads comprising bare metal and virtualized applications. Okay, so I hope we cross the microphone switching, all right. Uh, so Alex was talking about the general notion of uh, heterogeneous cloud. I will concentrate on the specific uh, area of uh, bare metal and uh, virtualized environment and applications. Uh, so first of all, a couple of definitions uh, that I will use throughout the slides because there is some overloading in terms. So a uh, hybrid environment in this scope means we have both a physical and virtual uh, host and the user can deploy uh, bare metal instances and uh, uh, virtual in instances. We also define uh, pools as resource, resource groups uh, of the same type. So we will have a bare metal pool uh, and virtualized pool. Uh, we define hybrid application as a composite application. It can be a multi-tier application that spans both virtual and physical servers. So Alex gave example before of a 3D rendering when we have one tier on a bare metal and the other tier on a virtual environment and so on. Um, so we set ourselves when we explore this area two main goals. Uh, one from the administrator perspective is to minimize the management complexity and to get a unified management across both bare metal deployment and virtual deployment. And from the user perspective, we want to get a simplified day-to-day -day management and to show also enhancement in the uh, user experience. Uh, there. Uh, we will set ourselves a design goal because there are many ways to do that. So we set ourselves a design goal to try, if possible, to use a native OpenStack solution, meaning that we will not need to, to use any higher level orchestrator or any other models above OpenStack. Okay, so this is a quick illustration of what we mean by 
multi, by hybrid application and hybrid environment, we can see we have two tenants. Uh, each of them has both virtual machines and physical machine, and we can see that the application are mapped to both virtual and physical machines. And we can see that as usual, on the virtual world, uh, the virtual machines of the two tenants can coincide on the same uh, host. Uh, you can imagine that this imposes uh, severe uh, problems on uh, security, isolation, and so on. Uh, so I want to go through a couple of scenarios that first demonstrate the strengths of uh, this hybrid uh, notion, and second, we will touch them later on in the presentation. So the first is node repurposing. Here, the, uh, what we try to get is get a, a native policy that dynamically balanced between the pools of the physical and virtual servers. Uh, so for example, if you go uh, to repurpose a virtual node where you have a hypervisor, to, be, to become, uh, to take the place of a physical node where you can deploy bare metal uh, applications. And uh, there are a few steps you usually do. First, you need to detect the resource congestion on your physical uh, pool. Uh, we can then identify a candidate host on the virtual environment, then that we can repurpose. We will evacuate all the VMs from that host and assign it by uh, uh, changing all the necessary network and storage uh, uh, configuration, assign it to the bare metal pool. Uh, from there, the moment there is a request for bare metal deployment, we can use that server. The other scenario is what we call runtime decision on uh, target deployment. I think it was also mentioned uh, this morning in the, in the presentation. Here, what we want to do is, we don't want to specify the target for the deployment. Uh, we just want to specify, I want to deploy a database or MySQL or whatever, uh, use generic terms, and the system will automatically choose the server type or according to some performance criteria, for example. It will leverage information from Silometer, the scheduler, heat, and so on, in order to come to the correct uh, decision. Uh, for that, we need also to, uh, in terms of the image management, we need uh, to either construct the image in runtime, meaning that we take a base image and then adapt it uh, in runtime, or uh, we can also maintain multiple versions of the image, but present the user with some virtual image that represents those images. And then we can deploy them regularly using the regular provisioning mechanism, either through ironic to deploy bare metal uh, or other things. So when we go to this whole area, there are several approaches uh, for the management. And we define them on the range of shared nothing to shared everything. On the shared nothing, each pool, each resource pool is uh, managed by its own uh, OpenStack instance, there is no sharing between the services of OpenStack uh, uh, whatsoever. On shared everything, we have a single instance of OpenStack uh, managing both virtual and physical environments simultaneously, and all services are shared. So we have the same Neutron managing simultaneously both the virtual and physical environment. Of course, there are some intermediate solutions. We can consider regions and cells as uh, some intermediate solution uh, where we have uh, shared uh, keystone and separate uh, services. Uh, so we all know that OpenStack can natively support virtual uh, host, of course. We can also see that, uh, especially lately, uh, OpenStack can handle very uh, nicely bare metal support, so why not? both of them together simultaneously. So indeed, this is what we were focusing on, trying to come up with a single uh, uh, management. We call it integrated management, where we have a single instance of OpenStack. So in general, the basic architecture is uh, we use a, a special resource type, as we defined them before. Uh, we call them the pools. They are uh, mapped to resource pools. 
Uh, in terms of the scheduling, we use uh, multiple host aggregates. We use specifically bare metal aggregate and host aggregate filters in order to do the scheduling. And in the network, in addition to the regular administrator network, we also use the separate management network dedicated for the bare metal machines that are used, exposed to the user. There are two different bare metal machines. Uh, if, we, if we deploy compute node and bare metal machine, that's an administrator role as we see it. But we also want to allow a regular user to deploy to bare metal machines, and we don't want that user to uh, touch the whole management system. So we had to separate it. And we have the data network, and there, there are challenges as well, because we want that network to spend both virtual machine and uh, uh, physical machines. Sorry. Okay, so the advantages uh, are very clear on that approach. Uh, they are uh, aligned with what Alex mentioned on the requirement. Uh, we get a native and simple OpenStack solution. Uh, we do not require any external mechanism. So for example, the repurposing scenario that I presented uh, before can be driven and managed uh, by a hit uh, alone, managing both pools simultaneously. We don't need to coordinate between configuration of two services. So for example, if we want such complex networking uh, configuration, uh, we don't need to take care of uh, two different neutron services trying to interact between themselves uh, in order to manage the configuration. Uh, we get a simplified administration because we now ha can control everything from a single point. We get a unified uh, look of the system. Uh, this reduces the complexity a lot because we reduce the number of services. And it uh, helps us with diagnostic and root cause analysis because we don't need to correlate many log files coming from all over the place. Everything is in the same place. Uh, from the user perspective, it's also evident uh, that it's better because uh, the user get to see a unified topology of everything of the whole system and he doesn't need to go to different uh, uh, things. So what are the technical uh, uh, challenges that we have here? So first of all, OpenStack, uh, it seems that it, it has some gaps when coming to manage both bare metal and virtual machine together. So to do it uh, uh, separately, we have the triple O, we have the under cloud and over cloud and all of that, but to do it together, there are some gaps. First of all, in the networking, we know that uh, uh, we, we already saw that we uh, mandate the uh, mandate neutron to manage simultaneously both both the uh, physical and virtual uh, network. We also want to take advantage of the unique capability of each uh, area. So we may want to use uh, open flow for the physical and obvious for the virtual and so on, and we want everything to be connected. Uh, I want to emphasize the fact that uh, I will only I will go through several examples here, but those are dedicated uh, specifically to the hybrid uh, case. There are some general issues when you go to bare metal especially. There are still gaps in the bare metal area. Uh, we heard about uh, multi-tenants in bare metal and so on, but those are part of the bare metal work and I'm quite sure everything will work eventually. So, uh, on the compute side, we need to enhance the scheduler to better support heterogeneity. This means that we want to allow different policies for different pools. Uh, on physical pool, we may want to look on the GPU consumption rather than on the CPU consumption. So we may need to introduce here a different model. We want to support instance management for bare metal today uh, it is managed the same way as regular instances, which is not reasonable because there are many operations which are not applicable to instance in bare metal. Uh, and another example is the hierarchical view. We believe that you need to add some hierarchical, uh, uh, hierarchical relation between the bare metal instance and the compute node running on top of it. You, know, you can deploy a compute node on the bare metal and deploy VMs on top of that. If you manage it in two different uh, open stacks, it seems okay. If you manage it with a single instance of open stack, there are 
uh, several issues that can happen. For example, you can go ahead and shut down or delete uh, the bare metal instance. Everything will shut down and will be okay. However, the virtual machine uh, might stay, uh, will stay in uh, some uh, active, more active state or even in a zombie state in the database because there is no propagation between the two layers. Uh, lastly, uh, I want to touch two uh, uh, other examples. First, for the image management area. And once again, once you try to do hybrid application, you immediately see uh, things that can be improved. So for example, the access control in a glance. Uh, so for bare metal, uh, we are using, uh, ironic, we are using some special RAM disk uh, during the PXC boot. Now, you don't want to expose those images to a regular user. The user wants to deploy a MySQL or he wants to deploy a patch on, on a bare metal server. He doesn't want to see such images. However, in Glance today, if he used those images, he can also see them. So we need to add some different model in which he can use images but not see them and so on. And I, I mentioned before the issue of supporting the runtime adaptation or runtime selection of images. From the UI experience, uh, we, I will show you a couple of examples. There are things that I can call glitches on, on, on Horizon, but that's probably because it was not designed or it need to be extended in order to support simultaneously management of both virtual and physical environment. In addition, some of those issues are coming from inherent issues in the underlying data model and so on. So once we fix those, it will be fixed uh, on top. So the last thing I want to uh, go through a hybrid application example. We went ahead and just tried, uh, uh, where uh, in the middle of exploring uh, that area, we are uh, trying several applications try to see how to configure the network, how to set up everything. So what we try to do is deploy a hybrid WordPress. And uh, here what we try to do is uh, we want to have the Apache and WordPress on a virtual machine. We want the MySQL to be on a physical node. So we actually did it and we set up everything with a single hit template uh, that deployed everything simultaneously to the two nodes. Uh, we use host aggregates for the scheduling, so we had to define all of those. And we use this image builder from TPLO to build the bare metal images, and we had to inject some uh, specific cloud init element into it in order for that to work. I must say that we must admit at least that we had to do some manual uh, configuration of the network. Uh, it, it didn't work uh, automatically through Newton. Everything, we had to change some of that. Uh, you can see here a screenshot of the uh, hit uh, stack resources and topology. And I can show you what it looks like in Horizon. And you can see what I meant by trying to uh, enhance it a little bit. Because if you do want, um, and it depends, some people will say, you know, they do not maybe agree with that approach. But if you do think that we can manage everything with a single open stack and you want to do that in the native way. So it might be not, it might not be the best way to, for example, uh, uh, present uh, the bare metal machines as hypervisors. Uh, we may consider a different view or something like that. And you can see that, for example, a regular user can see those two deploy-based images, which uh, he actually do not, he actually doesn't know even what they mean. Um, so in summary, uh, heterogeneous cloud environment are gaining momentum. We strongly believe that it's critical uh, to support those in order to host broad spectrum of application. We already see that. Uh, we believe that OpenStack is a promising solution to manage hybrid clouds. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. Uh, but uh, and by using integrated management, we believe that we can uh, get a simple and native OpenStack solution out of the box and simplify the administration and enhanced user experience. Uh, we need, however, to have a very careful design in order to maintain all the regular requirements of security isolation uh, 
when we span across both bare metal and virtual environment, and there are still some gaps uh, that need to be addressed. Uh, we, are start, we are just now starting to explore that area. We already uh, did the uh, some work we encourage everyone that want or that share the same vision, uh, come and talk to us, me, Alex, uh, we will be happy to collaborate. And be sure to stop by the IBM booth to see some interesting uh, demos. Thank you all, and we now have time to questions. Uh, you can use the microphone if you want. Uh, hello, my name is Roman. So uh, you said that uh, you want to be able to install, to, to, to run the same applications uh, both against the virtual machines and against the hardware machines. So how do you decide the moment when you need to uh, migrate from uh, the one type of, of uh, servers to another type? And can I just ask the question too because it's related. So uh, how do you resolve dependencies uh, for the specific features of the hardware machines like GPU or something like that? So first of all, on migration, we did not, we are not migrating, it's not P2V. So if that was the, maybe I was uh, misunderstood, we are not migrating the application from physical to uh, virtual. We are rep repurposing the server. We are changing the goal of the server. So it was a KVM host in the virtual environment, and now suddenly the Hadoop cluster needs another node. So I want to move that one to there. So I, I'm not doing P2V. And the other one on the bandwidth, I didn't get the question. Yeah, I think I did. Uh, so uh, uh, we, do see, we do see a need to, to make the resource abstraction uh, richer so that we can express the different capabilities that uh, are offered by different machines so that we can do the matching in an intelligent manner. So. Uh, for example, GPUs and others, we need, uh, we need a way in the data model to express those capabilities and be able to match them to the requirements uh, of the applications through heat, for example, or something like that. So there are some gaps in that area as well. Any other question? So you mentioned uh, a challenge or a risk, perhaps, when uh, repurposing a physical machine that maybe has Nova Compute hypervisor on it. You could use Ironic to repurpose it and install Hadoop, but then what happens to the VMs? So uh, you did not really mention that you're using Triple O to install Nova uh, hypervisor on that machine in the first place. So what are you doing there? No, no, uh, 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 that's a good question. So the, uh, maybe I didn't mention it, but the assumption is that you know, everything was starting from there. So we are not, everything was installed using that OpenStack instance. So uh, the, the compute nodes that you are talking about were deployed using that system. Okay, so uh, I have control over that. Uh, I'm, I'm not uh, uh, discovering an existing system and trying to manage it, okay? Anyone? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.